Well, hello. Uh, it's good to be with you all. I love the church, and uh, being here today, uh, it's just it's delightful to to worship with you and and to uh, be in this place. And it's neat how God's church gathers all over the place in all kinds of different situations. And I was in Kenya a year and a half, almost two years ago, and uh, in Nairobi, and, and doing some work there in one of the slums and. And just seeing the different churches there as well, um, you know, wherever God's people, God's people gather, that is the church. And uh, I just, I, I'm always delighted whenever uh, I get a chance to to be with different people and, and worship God together with other folks. And so excited about that. Uh, I'm going to preach this morning or, or this afternoon uh, uh, and about uh, a passage of scripture that you've probably read before. People get tattoos with it on near their arms and got it on their bumper stickers on their cars and different things. But I'm going to come at it from just a little bit different approach uh, and kind of focus on a different aspect of it uh, based on kind of what God has, has done in my life over the last uh, about year and a half and, and the things that he has kind of walked me through and, and the things that I have seen him do. And the passage of scripture I'm talking about is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And um, that's a passage of scripture, again, that um, is very, very familiar, actually verses 12 and 13. So this is what the word of God says. It says, I have learned, this is Paul speaking to the church in Philippi there. He says, I have learned, I know, I says, excuse me, he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have pl plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And maybe you've used that verse before to, to remind yourself that whatever it is you might be facing or walking through, that that, that you could do this, you know, that, that God's with you, that, that Christ gives you the strength that you need. And the piece that I want to, to kind of focus on this afternoon is, is just a little thing that uh, Paul says here that I think is really important. He says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty, but then he says, I have learned. I've learned. You know, the longer you walk with the Lord, you more, the more you learn. Um, the more that you've had to, you've experienced, the more that you have gone through, the more that you've watched God uh, work in your life and in the lives around you. And so all of us, even if you've only been walking with the Lord for a short time, we, we've learned some things. You know, there's some things that God has shown us. We're, we're a little wiser than we used to be. Now, Truth of the matter is, this is actually my 25th year of ministry, uh, which is crazy. I was a youth pastor for 10 years, and then I've been pastoring True Life for 15 years, 25 years uh, of ministry. And in some ways, um, I, I feel like I still have so much yet to learn, okay? I, I, you'd think by now I'd have figured this thing out, you know, but there's still so much that I, I, I still have to, to, to understand and learn. But one thing is true is that I've, as I've walked with God, as I have been in relationship with him, I've learned some things that are important to me, things that are crucial for uh, my relationship with him and, and for the things that he wants to do in my life and show me. And I think that's kind of where Paul's coming from in this situation. You know, you know he says, that I've, I've been in those situations where I've had needs. I've been in those situations where I've had plenty. Uh, whether it's that situation or the other, I've learned something. I've learned something really, really important, and that is the secret of being content in every situation. Basically what he says is whether or not I've been in a situation where I've been in want, or whether I've been in a situation where I've had everything I need, the one thing I've learned is that God is with me, that God has me right there in that situation, that God's in control. That's a very important lesson to learn and not an easy one to learn sometimes. And so I want to share with you from that spirit today something that I feel like God's taught me and, and, and some things that I've learned um, about God and who he is. And I, and I want to talk about overcoming and what that looks like. You know, we live in a day and age today where... Uh, there's so many people today who struggle with things like anxiety, depression, uh, various things like that. You know, it, it's it, it's not uncommon for in, individuals. I'm sure there's people in here today 
who have had those kind of experiences. I too uh, have gone through those kind of experiences. When I came back from Kenya, um, I had dr drastic jet lag. I mean, it just knocked me out. And um, it, it literally um, opened the door to anxiety in my life. I'd never had anxiety before. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was going crazy. I, I didn't know what was going on. And, and, all, and I remember Scott was a major friend to me during that time. We went to a conference together and I needed those moments with, with friends and different stuff. And, um, but in the midst of all that, I learned some things. I learned some things that were really, really important to me. And I just want to share this with you today and let God use it in any way that he wants to. And so let me pray and then we'll jump into that. God, thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for this place that we are blessed to meet. Thank you for this church. Thank you for Scott and Lindsay, Lord, and their uh, leading of this church, Father, and, and God, your hand upon them. And I pray you would bless them, Lord, and bless this church. Bless us right now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. And, and as we walk through these things, Lord, I, I ask God that today you just help us to see uh, as we talk about certain scriptures, God, I pray they come alive for us and, and that, Lord, you'd have your way, that you'd have your way in my heart and life, that you'd have your way in every person in this room. And I thank you, God, for the things that you teach us. And um, you don't always teach us in nice, comfy moments. Uh, oftentimes, Lord, you teach us in the difficulties. And I pray that, just as Paul was saying, that, God, today we would realize that there's some things you're trying to teach us and that, God, we would learn those things. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to share with you three things that I have learned, okay? I'm not Paul. Uh, by no means, no stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I want to share with you three things that I have learned. Uh, and especially in this this area of overcoming and, and keeping in mind some of the things that I have gone through and um, things that we've walked through even as a church. I know uh, I know what it is to be a church plant. I know what it is to 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 be trying to uh, do the best you can. You know, do everything you can to the best of your abilities to to lead a church. And and I know what that is. Uh, we've had situations where we weren't sure how we were going to come up with the funds that we needed. You know, I remember one time I was at this pastor's meeting. I, I sit on this uh, particular committee that, you know, um, has young men, young ladies come in. And if they're getting uh, going for their license and stuff, we interviewed them. And I remember I got a, a phone call from my treasurer. And she wanted to tell me that we had paid all the bills and there were still $7 in our checking account, in the church checking account. And I remember I was so excited that we had seven bucks in our church checking account. I, I was, and we had paid all the bills. And I remember one of the guys who was there with me sitting around the table, he was from a much more established church. And, and he just looked at me like I was nuts, you know, because he would have been in a total panic if they only had $7 in their checking account. But anyway, um, so I hope that in what I'm sharing this, this afternoon, that somewhere along the line, uh, something that God uses will just be um, powerful for you. Uh, the first thing I want to share this, this uh, afternoon that I have learned is this, that, that God sees me. And that's pretty important to me. You know, we live in a world, billions of people, and the idea that God actually sees me is just crazy. And But yet, right now, right here in this place, God sees me. He sees every one of us. Uh, and he sees us through the eyes of a father who loves us and cares about us. And and I, I just, I love that about God. You know, it doesn't matter where I'm at, I'm at he sees me. It doesn't how, matter how far away I get. It doesn't matter how dark the darkness is. It cannot hide me from him. Uh, God sees me in every situation. And, you know, this was true for Jesus as well. Uh, a couple of the passages that I love about Jesus are times when he actually saw people. Uh, you know, in the midst of the crowd and all the people pressing around him, Jesus saw these individuals. One in particular comes from Luke chapter 13. And there was this little old lady who, who was hanging around the temple all the time. And, and uh, Jesus haps, happens to be there teaching on this day. And, and um, you know, everybody's sitting around maybe like this. I'm sure there were a whole lot more people there. And they were listening to him, pins on needle, you know, and just listening to every word he said. And this little lady, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously, just kind of goes by in the back of the room. She's there all the time. Said the word of God says she was bent over double, so she kind of walks around, you know, like this. And in fact, I think it says that she had been like that for like 15 years or something. I can't remember. It's a long time. 
So everybody's just kind of used to the little old lady who walks around the temple. Probably most people don't even see her anymore. But in the middle of his teaching, the Word of God says that Jesus saw her. He saw her, and he went to her, and he put his hand on her, and he healed her. And she stood upright. Now, everybody in the room was upset because this was on the Sabbath, and that's a whole other thing we won't get into. But, you know, I just love the idea that, that Jesus saw this little old lady, and he went to her, and, and he, he healed her. Another passage is in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 15, and that's the story of the widow of Nain. Do you know how many people Jesus raised from the dead when he was walking on earth? Three. He raised three different people from the dead. Jairus' daughter, Lazarus, and the widow of Nain's son. And in this particular piece of scripture, they, uh, they're just kind of passing through town, uh, this place called Nain, and there's a funeral procession going on. And in that day and age, the mortality rate wasn't great. There were funerals going on all the time. They had done everything that you're supposed to do. They had hired the whalers. You know who whalers are? They're the guys and gals that walk around, oh, you know. They had done all those kinds of things. And, and most of the time, you just kind of keep on going. I mean, you know, they had a destination in mind. They were headed somewhere. But the scripture says that Jesus saw this mother who had lost her husband and now lost her only son. And that he went to, the, to her, went to the casket, raised the son from the dead, and gave him back to his mother. It's just like, wow, you know. I'm sure the disciples, somebody on the team was like, hey, this is not in the agenda. This isn't on the schedule. You know, we don't have time for this. People die all the time. Let's just keep moving. We got somewhere to be. But Jesus saw her. And I, I love that. I love that about Jesus. And I want you to know this afternoon, and it's important to me, and if it's not important to you today, it will be eventually. I want you to know that God sees you too. Wherever you are, whatever you are going through, whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going to go through, you, you never come up missing when it comes to, to God. He, he sees you right now, even in the junk that you might be going through, even in the uncertainty of the moment that you might be experiencing, even, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, whether it's in seasons of, of plenty or seasons of want, God sees you. He, he hasn't lost track of you. Never, ever, ever forget that. God sees you. The second thing that I've learned is not only that God sees me, that God is with me. That, that he is with me. I need to know that. Uh, I, I need to know that God is with me. Uh, you know, there's a story in Mark chapter 4, and I'm not going to read these. Feel free, like the Bereans, to check them out, make sure I'm not telling any lies. But in Mark chapter 4, there's a story about how Jesus is on this boat with his disciples, and, um, you know, there's a storm that's come up, and these guys are like fishermen and stuff, so uh, they're panicked. So this must be a pretty good storm. And they're doing everything they can to, to fight the storm. They're doing everything they know how to do. And then finally, finally, when it, when it looks like things are at their worst, somebody on the boat remembers Jesus is here. <laughs> and so they run down to the boat, the lower area, and there's Jesus taking a nap. You know, you've heard this story before. And they're like, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to drown? And, and Jesus is like, you know, he, he gets up, he comes up to the top, and he just, you know, be quiet, peace, be still. And, you know, the winds die down and the waves die down and they're all like, oh, you know, and they just can't believe that that just happened, that kind of thing. And, and, you know, the thing about it is, is that Jesus wasn't upset that they were trying really hard. He wasn't upset that they had, they were a little afraid of the situation and what was going on. The thing he was afraid of or upset about is that they forgot he was there. They didn't have faith. You know, it's not like the boat is going to go down with Jesus on it, you know. And, and so he's like, that's the one thing that he is just a little bit upset about, is that they forgot he was there. There's a passage of scripture that means the world to me. It came to me at a time when I needed to know that Jesus was with me. <laughs> and uh, it comes from the book of Acts, and it's in chapter 18. And at the time, I was reading through the book of Acts in the message. And I want to share it with you from the message. Let me give you just a little background, and, and uh, then I'll read it to you. 
in, in this particular area of scripture, in, in Acts chapter 18, and then going back to chapter 16, 17, what's going on is that Paul is traveling around preaching, right? He's planting churches, he's preaching the gospel. But what happens is, every time he gets to a city, it's like, you know, they have a great service and people get saved and, and, and you know, awesome things are happening. And then the, this group catches up with him called the Judaizers. You know, they're the ones who think that everybody has to become a Jew to, to have a relationship with God, you know. And so they keep catching up with him and they keep spreading rumors. They, you know, several times they almost kill him. Uh, you know, they, 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 they want him arrested, all these different things. So every time things get going good, this group catches up. And they just ruin it. And so it's like this. You never been on one of these roller coaster rides in your life? You know, it's like, ooh, this is awesome. This stinks. This is awesome. Oh, this is terrible. You know, and that's kind of the situation that we find Paul in uh, in this passage of scripture. But there's a piece here, man. It just grabs me every time I, I read it. Um, but it, it it's a situation where Paul one night, he's just kind of bummed, you know. Um, things have been a little bit tough. And he read, let me read this to you, beginning in verse 7, and I'll read it through verse 11. And this again, this is in the message. It says, He walked out and went to the home of Titus, Justice, a God-fearing man who lived right next to the Jews' meeting place. But Paul's efforts with the Jews weren't a total loss. For Crispus, the meeting place president, put his trust in the master. His entire family believed with him. In the course of listening to Paul, a great many Corinthians believed and were baptized. One night, the master spoke, spoke to Paul in a dream. Keep it up, and don't let anyone intimidate or silence you. No matter what happens, I'm with you, and no one is going to be able to hurt you. You have no idea how many people I have on my side in this city. This is the part that just, you know, man, it's highlighted in every Bible I have. That was all he needed. That was all he needed to stick it out. And he stayed there another year and a half, faithfully teaching the word of God to the Corinthians. I'm with you, you know? Sometimes that's all we need is to know that God is with us, to know that Jesus is with us. I'm with you. Okay, then I can do this. I can get through this. I can do this. I can accomplish what you have in front of me, Lord, if I know that you are with me. And I want, to, I want you to know today that, that God is with you. And then the final thing is this, God sees me, God is with me. And the final thing that I've learned is this, is that God is good. Those are three pretty good things, you know? I mean, if, if nothing else, if you go home this afternoon and you keep you think about that, that God is, is sees you, that God is with you, and that God is good, if you could just get a hold of those just a little bit, man, this this, this whole week is, is, is better. Those are pretty awesome things. But God sees you, God is with you, and God is good. He's good. You know, there was a passage of scripture in the Old Testament when, when, when Moses wanted to see God, you know? He's like, hey, I'd, I'd like to see you, I'd like to know more about you, and, 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 and God says, okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of put you in this place, and then I'm gonna let my goodness pass by you. And, you know, it's just amazing to think about what that even looks like and what that even might be. But God is good. So no matter what you're going through, whether it's a season of plenty or whether it's a season of want, in both of those areas, God is good. Paul says, I've learned to be content in every situation. I've learned that when, no matter the situation, that the goodness of God doesn't change. That the three things that I'm mentioning this afternoon, they don't change based on my circumstances, based on my situation, based on the odds of what I'm going through, based on any, no, they don't change. God still sees me, God's still with me, and God is still good. And that's important for me to know and for me to understand. When you look at the, uh, the uh, story of, of the prodigal son and the lost coin and the lost sheep in Luke chapter 15. Every one of those are stories about a good God. A good God who doesn't lose sight of people. A good God who goes looking uh, when people wander off or come up missing. 
God is a good God. And Jesus demonstrates us that to us over and over and over again. You know, it's been, I, I walked through that anxiety period of my life for about four to six months. For about three to four months, it was like heavy. You know, if anybody's ever dealt with anxiety, it was like terrible, you know. And the crazy thing was, is that I didn't want to hide it, you know, so I told my church and I told other people what was going on. And it was, the, the craziest thing was every time I told somebody, it seemed like just about every other time I would do that, they'd go, oh yeah, I've had anxiety before, I went through depression, and I was like, and this was my first time to ever experience it like that, so I'd be like, I'm so sorry, this is terrible, you know? And they were like, you know, okay, whatever, you know, but in the midst of that, these are things that I learned. Not just going through the anxiety, but pastoring a, a young church. Trying to be a good dad to four kids and a good husband to an awesome wife. And these are the things that I have learned, as Paul says. That God sees me, that God knows me and is with me, and that God is good. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26, I love this verse. It says, there's no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you across the skies in majestic splendor. <laughs> that, that's the God that we serve. Here's what I want you to know this morning, this afternoon. I keep saying morning, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying. Everybody in this room, we've, we've gone through something. Maybe you're going through it now. I don't know. Whatever it is. But all of us have gone through something at some point in the past that when we were there, we were thinking, how are we ever going to get through this? You know, how are we, how are we going to make it? I don't know where the money's going to come from. I don't know where the answers are going to come from. I don't know where the job's going to come You know, on and on and on. But here's what's so cool. And, and even for our church, you know, like our church, True Life Community, there were uh, about three or four years where I routinely had conversations with my wife or, you know, a couple of trusted friends where I would say, I don't know if we're going to make it. And here's the cool thing. I'm still here. We're still here. Because God is good. Because he saw you in that moment because he's with you. I'm still here. I didn't like go poof one day and just disintegrate because things were so terrible. Uh, I'm still here. Our church is still here. And God is still good. And as long as those three things are always true and they always will be, um, then I'm good. I'm good. So I, I just want to encourage you with that um, today. Um, God is an incredible God. And uh, I just trust that maybe somebody today needed to just hear that. And, and it's the thing that God put on my mind when Scott asked me to preach. And um, I wanted to share it with you. Um, much like Paul, the more you walk with the Lord, there are some things that you learn and they're important. Uh, things that you're never you're never going to regret learning those things uh, in the midst of learning them because sometimes God teaches us in really wonderful ways and you know it's like everything's going great and everybody's excited but sometimes he teaches us in the difficult moments and in all things um, he is good I want to pray for you this afternoon Father I thank you for today and the chance to be here as the body of Christ I thank you for your word. I thank you for the things that you're teaching us as we walk with you, sometimes stumbling with you. But God, we are so grateful that in the midst of everything, Lord God, these three things are true. They'll always be true. And so like with Paul today, Lord, we just we trust and we realize that it's about your strength it's about who you are it's about who you are in us and how you're working through us 
And I just pray that if there's someone here today who who needed to hear this message, I pray, God, you'd use it in a mighty way in their lives. And if we don't need it today, we'll need it eventually. So help us to remember. You are so good, Lord. And I am so grateful for your goodness in my life, in my family, and in my church. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.